Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for beginners. In today's episode, we will learn about component lifecycle hooks. In the previous episode, we have learned what components are, how to generate components, what is component decorator, what are the different values or definitions it can take, etc. So if you're new to this channel, I would request you kindly go through the previous episode so you have continuity in your learning. Welcome back friends. This is part 14 of the Angular 10 full tutorial playlist. I have planned around 100 tutorials for you in this series. So make sure you have subscribed to my channel and so and you check out the description box below so you get the notes and the code. All right. So, so far we have completed all these topics on your screen right now and we are on the 14th episode. So in the last two episodes, we have learned and mastered Angular modules and Angular components. Today we will learn about Angular component lifecycle. All right. So every Angular component, right, has eight lifecycle hooks, right? That means each component can be tracked with eight different lifecycle hooks. These eight things together are called as component lifecycle. That means how a component starts, how it is tracked and how finally till it is destroyed. That means these are the eight stages that a component goes through every time that we create, we change or we can use that to track individual component. Why do we need it is the first question. So during the course of your application, there will be a lot of changes that will happen to components. For example, some data might change while you do some operations or you want some data to be loaded while the component is created. You also want to make sure that if a component changes, some other component should get that latest information. So these are some of the real time use cases which are used in creating the lifecycle hooks. So let's learn more about them. So the eight lifecycle hooks are ng on changes. That means whenever a component changes, ng on init, ng do check, ng after content init, ng after content checked, ng after view init, ng after view checked, and ng on destroy. So these are the eight lifecycle hooks that a component can be used with plugging in with our custom logic. Let's learn about each one of them in detail to understand what they do. All right, so we will go through each one of them now and we will understand what it does in detail. ng on changes used in pretty much any component that has an input, right? So whenever there is an input that your component is receiving, there will be some changes, right? Changes to value. And that's where it is used. That is ng on changes. ng on init means it is used for initializing the data in your component. That means whenever your component is rendered for the first time, you need to call something and load your data in the component. That is ng on init. ng do check called during all the change detection runs. So Angular runs on change detection strategy which means whenever there is a change or an update or it's detected, it will do a ng do check. The next one is ng after content in it, which means this method is called once after first ng do check, right? So this is called through the run of initialization of the content. Okay. Then we have ng after content checked which means this is called after every ng do check. Okay. It will wait to after till ng content in it on first run through, right? Then we have ng after view in it. That means once the view is initialized, what it should do, right? That is ng after view in it. We also have ng after view checked. That means this is called after all the content is initialized and checked. This is the first call after ng after view init. This is called after every 
ng after content checked call is completed. The last one is ng on destroy. This is used to clean up any necessary code when a component is removed from the DOM. Fairly often used for subscri unsubs unsubscribing from the things like services. Called only just once before the component is removed from the DOM itself. Right. So this eight, this is all the theoretical explanation I would say for you to understand and know what they do. Right. But my idea is to show you practical and teach you how to use them in real time. So which we will be doing going forward as and when we uh, start writing our application. But you should be aware of these. If I implement them now, you will be confused. Right. And that's why I don't want to do that. I am introducing this topic to you so that you should be aware but we will start using them in the coming episodes. So now talking about um, some of the most used ones, right? So I have worked on large enterprise applications on Angular and I can tell you with confidence some of the most used ones, right? If you ask any good developer on Angular, they will tell you that you don't have to use all eight uh, lifecycle hook always, right? It doesn't make sense to be honest. And besides, it doesn't serve the purpose again. That's depending from application logic to logic. But in most cases, you will have to use ng on changes. That means you need to keep track of some component, whether it is changing or not. You will also need ng on init very frequently because you need to initialize data into components. You will also need ng after view in it. So that's another thing that is quite oftenly used. Finally, we have something called ng on destroy. So usually we will subscribe to some data from services in ng on init and we will unsubscribe in the component on ng on destroy. Right now let me show you with some code examples. Again, I will not jump into too much to confuse you. I will ha hold your hand slowly and graduate you step by step. Right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give you some component lifecycle hooks. Right. So uh, let me sh first show you what how at ng do a ng serve. So I will show you so far we built some components, some modules. Let me show you the output first and then we will try and understand lifecycle hooks in uh, how it's working. Let's give it a one quick minute. So as usual friends, uh, I can be reached at surya.aradhya at gmail.com. Uh, send me your doubts, queries if you have. Um, I'm here to help you as much as I can. So make sure that you get you learn practice. And if you're stuck, just let me know in the email address or in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you. All right. So let's give it a minute. It's compiling. In the meanwhile, please do like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. All right, so our application is building. So let's give it. Okay, so now it's compiled, right? So let's see the application that we have done so far. It's nothing fancy. It will not show up anything because we have not done any uh, logical pieces yet. But just to show you that all our components modules are working fine. I just want to show you through that. All right, so what we'll do? Uh, the first thing is we'll run through localhost. So it says simple CRM, ABC, ABC, ABC. Right. There is nothing much. So go to app component. You see that's the code. It's here. Just delete everything that we have. And you see just I have the title. Right. It should show simple CRM. OK, let's save it. Now it's compiled in the title. OK, so here it's there. Let's call it simple CRM. All righty. And save it. OK, so now you should see output as simple CRM. That's the most simplest uh, code that you can think of. It just have a title, right? But you see, we created a lot of modules and components. We will not use them now. We will hold on for a couple of more. I think one more episode and then we will start coding, right? But if you open any component, let's say add contact, right? You would see ng on in it, right? This is a default hook that is already coming with every component that you generate, right? So that's a default one that is always generated. OK, so let me close other tabs for you. OK, so by default. 
we have ng on init that's the one that is always coming with the component that you generate right to use this we have to implement ng on init right so you see you have to import that lifecycle hook whichever you want to use now let's say i want to implement ng on changes right so we can say on changes right and it automatically imported from angular core and it's an error because i have not implemented this so you will say ng on changes again right so the th important thing is whichever lifecycle hook you want to use right whichever lifecycle hook we want to use first just import it in the class right like this import it here from angular core then do a implements the interface that is on changes and then finally right second so the first step is import it second extend the implements interface right third implement the method right so three steps first import the life cycle hook that you want to work with second implements so you can have more than one here like i have shown you ng on in it ng on changes you can have any number of ng on destroy right so it imp Im it imported ng on destroy then copy this then go here and say ng on destroy right so you can have any number of life cycle hooks any number of life cycle hooks implemented okay and so there are eight life cycle hooks that we will implement and these are the this is how you will use them right now there are a lot of confusion questions i'm sure you will have um, i would say list them down because today um, i don't want to confuse you right it's too early uh, it's too early for us to implement all of them today right so we will revisit will revisit this Uh, topic again uh, when we do component child parent child communication right so just to give you a brief about it uh, and component communication means communicating between communication means uh, between components right between components it can be parent child child to parent parent to child right child child to parent so this is how data is shared right so it's too early for us today because you will end up confused but like i said i am here to teach you end to end right and to master you right to help you master angular so what i will do is we will come back to this chapter again it is confusing little bit to be honest uh, for beginners you will be, you will be like um, you know it it's easy to get um, scared by looking at this i don't want to scare you i want to help you right so what i will do is i will go step by step in the next episode we will learn about um, the templating then we will learn about directives and then finally we will learn about component communication and the life cycle hooks again right that is a that is the only uh, way to learn and that is the only way to master it if you go otherwise there are full chances that you will be lost and that's not the right way to study i would say all right so that being said um, that brings us to the end of this episode we, like i said we will come back to the component communication after templating and directives right so stay tuned for that i will definitely cover and help you master it so don't worry about it so in the next uh, episode we will talk about component communication little bit uh, what it means and then we will jump into uh, templating and directives all right thank you so much for joining I hope you are enjoying the series. I hope you are learning and stay tuned. I will cover more details to help you learn and master Angular. If you like the video, give a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share and like the video. Thank you so much.